Hey guys, it's Trina and it is time to wrap up everything that I read in October. I read a total of 12 things this month and before I get into the individual reviews, I'm going to talk about booktube videos that I really enjoyed this month. First, Emily Hornberg did a wonderful video on why representation in media matters to her and I loved her take on it. She specifically talked about disabled characters and why we need more disabled characters in literature. Secondly, probably my favorite video of this month was by Mariana over at Impression Blend. She did a video called Five Horror Comics You Should Be Reading. Her reviews were so in-depth and helpful. So into the books, like I said, I read 12 things and I read five out of the nine of my TBR list. So if you want to see which ones I read, here we go. I read 12 things and five of them were novels, five were comics, one was a graphic novel, and one was a collection of short stories. My ratings for the month were that I had one five-star read, seven four-star reads, three three-star reads, and one two-star read. So like always, I start at the bottom of my ratings and work my way up to my favorite read of the month. So starting off with the book I rated two stars this month, it was The Dead House by Don Kurtigich. This is a story of a school that burned down and in the remains of this building, a diary was found and it seemed like it was a confessional. But the problem is, is that the person who the diary belonged to isn't somebody that exists. The thing that really works for this book is the format. It was done so well. This book is presented as if it is evidence in the investigation of what really happened in this school. So we have a collection of photocopies of the diary and transcripts from school surveillance video. I did enjoy the storytelling and the format of it. Unfortunately for me, I felt like it got into some topics and some areas that I just didn't personally enjoy. I felt like too many different topics were brought up and it kind Kind of just made the story a little bit messy. Also my TBR jar challenge for October was to read a debut novel that came out this year and I had a lot of people recommend this one so we can definitely count for my challenge. Next I read The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin and I buddy read this with Jordan from the Jordan Journals who is amazing you should check her out. This is a story about a girl who was in an accident with her two best friends and her boyfriend. Mara has no memory of what actually happened during the accident. So the book basically is exploring how she's dealing with this past trauma and can she recover her memories. And I ended up giving this book three stars. I just felt like it was so confusing and I didn't enjoy the way in which it confused me. Even the ending ended in a way that I think a lot of people would really immediately want to jump into the next book and I just didn't really care because I was so confused about everything else going on. The book started to focus on one aspect like mental health and then it focused on an aspect like paranormal and the earlier threads that I was really interested in made zero sense in the direction that the book turned. I do want to continue the series though and find out what the heck is happening. Next I have a comic series, Alex and Ada. I read volume two and volume three this month. The premise of this series basically is civil rights for robots. It's a futuristic world in which artificial intelligence exists and there are some self-aware robots and androids and uh, just dealing with what that would mean for society and how humans would react to that. I really enjoyed the idea and the premise and the exploration of all of that in this series. Volume 2 was my favorite. It just got a little bit deeper into types of relationships that could form between humans and androids. And Volume 3, this is actually the end of the series. It's completely done. They aren't publishing it anymore, so I am done with the series. I felt like the ending was a bit rushed. I also just did not agree with some of the motivations of the characters in the end, so I I don't know, it kind of was a lackluster ending, but the series did what it set out to do. Next is another comic series, American Vampire, volumes one and two. This is a series about the first vampire that was turned on American soil, and we basically just follow him throughout American history. The first volume takes place in the 1920s, and the second volume takes place in the 1930s. And the idea behind this series is that vampires should be scary. There are a lot of time jumps in this series. I am really glad that I read two volumes of this back to back. Otherwise, I feel like the first volume would have been like 
too hard to get into, but by volume two I was much more invested and I could really see the appeal of that type of storytelling. Personally, I was struck by some similarities to the Saga comic series that is really popular right now. And the stories are similar in the fact that there are so many different characters and we just see how their paths intertwine over time and everyone is hunting every other group down. And I just, I think that if you like Saga and you are okay with something historical about vampires, that the appeal would definitely be there for this one too. Next is another comic, Saga Volume 5 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. This comic series is set in space about an intergalactic war where one small family from different sides of the war are basically being chased. There's a lot of different forces and bounty hunters that are after them. My thoughts on this series are pretty much the same throughout every volume. I really enjoy the characters and how everything is crossing over and how they are all meeting up, but there are a lot of scenes that I just cannot unsee. I did not need to know the anatomy of a dragon in this one, for instance, so I just continue to enjoy the story and the characters, but wish some of the illustrations weren't quite as vulgar. Next at four stars is the graphic novel Anya's Ghost by Vera Braskel. This is the story of a girl who basically has a ghost that starts following her around and we just see how they interact and what this ghost's motives really are. So it was very interesting, very appropriate for Halloween. I have no idea what I was expecting from it, but it wasn't what actually happened, so I was pleasantly surprised and I did enjoy this one. I gave it four stars. I also gave four stars to Library of Souls by Ransom Riggs, which is the third and final book in the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. It is very difficult to summarize what this series is about. I think that it's one that you just need to start and discover on your own because that is most of the appeal of it is discovering this world. I enjoyed this book so much more than the second one but not quite as much as the first book that was my favorite in the series but this book was a very strong finale to the series. We got a lot of resolution. I felt very fulfilled in knowing how everybody and everything ended up and I felt like the ending was a deserved ending that our characters had actually worked towards and it wasn't just a magical happy ending and I just loved the focus that the ending had on what do you do after the grand adventure ends? How do you go back to your normal everyday life? So as a finale, this was really strong. However, the story just kind of got away from what I fell in love with about the first book. Next, I read Slasher Girls and Monster Boys by April Genevieve Tohalki, which is a collection of short stories that are horror and thriller themed, which was so appropriate for Halloween. There are several different authors that contributed short stories to this book, and I'm not going to summarize every single story, but instead I will give you a link down below to my Goodreads review, which does have a rating and review of each individual story. There's a great variety in the short stories. There are some about ghosts, zombies, serial killers, there's a murder mystery. If you're wanting to know which of the stories were the creepiest in this book, they were definitely, in my opinion, In the Forest, Dark and Deep by Carrie Ryan and The Girl Without a Face by Marie Lu. Those stories gave me actual chills. My favorite was Sleepless by Jay Kristoff. I just, I loved the way that that story unfolded. And my second favorite story in this collection was Stitches by A.G. Howard, and it was kind of a haunting, weird story, but I really enjoyed it. Next, I read Everything Everything by Nicola Leune. This is a story about a girl who is allergic to everything everything. If she goes outside she might die and one day a new family moves in in the house next door and there is a teenage boy that she thinks is pretty cute and they start talking through email and stuff since she can't go outside. This book was very quick to read. I flew through it. I devoured it. There are a lot of illustrations inside which makes it just speed through it. I found it very very predictable but that did not take away from my enjoyment of the story. I loved the story for what it was. However, people who pick this book up wanting a story about a girl with a disability, with an illness, think that you will be disappointed. This is not going to be an accurate representation of that kind of a disabled character. But there is an aspect to this book that is not being mentioned up front because I think a lot of people consider it a spoiler, but I feel like it should be said. I feel like there are people out there who would want to read it. So if you don't want to know anything more about the book, then just mute this video until I put this book down. The thing I feel is important in this book that people should know about is that this book actually deals with mental illness. That's not going to spoil the whole plot for you because you don't know what it is or who has it. I feel like it was an accurate portrayal of that specific disorder. However, my problem is that the author did not name that disorder or did not name it correctly, in my opinion. Now, I was a psychology major, 
but I am not a professional. But I felt like the symptoms were indicative of a different illness that I wish had been mentioned because it could have been a great opportunity to spread awareness and information about that disorder and knowing what it really was. I feel like this story and the way that it was revealed, even though it was a plot twist, I feel like that was accurate. That is what would really happen to someone in real life that was living with this and didn't know all these things. So I'm okay with it. I really liked it. I just wish it had been named and I wish that it were easier to talk about it without spoiling the plot. So it's tricky to talk about. I wish it wasn't, but I still really enjoyed the book. And lastly, my favorite read of the month was A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McGinnis, which everybody saw coming. I loved this book. This is a historical book about a girl who has been locked away in an insane asylum because she has an illegitimate pregnancy. So her family is trying to cover it up because it's improper for a lady of the time period. She makes a deal to become the apprentice of one of the doctors as he investigates these crime scenes around the city of a serial killer. I have a video up with four specific reasons why you should read this book. This book was extremely atmospheric. It did not brush over the historic details of asylums and mental illness and how patients were often mistreated and misdiagnosed, but I thought that it respected psychology and it respected these characters even when they had real mental illnesses. They were not villainized. They were respected. I really appreciate that about this book. I also appreciate the portrayal of friendships. We see strong female friendships and strong female-male friendships. And also this book has little to no romance in it at all, which was extremely refreshing. I love my romance too, but every once in a while it's nice to read one where the story just stands on its own. So I just have so many praises for this book. I absolutely loved it. So that's what I read in October. If you've read any of these, let me know what you thought about them. Let me know what your favorite read of October was. And if you have any questions about any of these books that I did not touch on, please don't hesitate to ask me down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the comments. Bye! Nope, not gonna happen. Types of relationships that could form between humans and androids. I almost said aliens. Slasher Girls and Monster Boys by April Genevieve Tuhaki. Yes. <laughs> I just said yes because I pronounced her name right. Some ghosts, some zombies, a murder mystery. Oh my gosh, that scared me. Woo! Something just popped out from behind my tree. <laughs> Stitches by A.G. Howard. That was a stop. <laughs> <laughs>